Hello STEM scholars, I'm Dr. Kelly Christopher and today I'm so excited to talk to you about the quality of our drinking water. When we see uh, images of the earth, we see water everywhere. Three-fourths of the uh, earth's surface is water. However, have you ever thought about how much water that we can actually drink? Most of the world's um, water is salt water, but fresh water is what we can drink. I have a jar here that represents all the water in the world. There's a hundred marbles in this jar. Can you imagine how much of this water do you think that we can actually drink? So if there's a hundred marbles here, what do you think? Well, in actuality, the amount of fresh water in the world is less than 1%. So only one marble. The whole earth, everybody on earth and all the plants in it have to share the water in this one marble. Well, and actually, it's not even the whole marble because there's some of this fresh water is trapped. It might be in the ground or it might be in the polar ice caps. So we don't even have access to it. So really it's less than 0.5% of the earth's water that we can drink. So. Now that we know how limited this resource is, I think it's important because now we can appreciate it. So today we're going to be testing the quality of our drinking water. We're gonna use water from the tap to begin with. Um, tap water is just water that you get from your sink. These are the supplies that you'll need. Indicator tablets for the various chemicals, water testing bags, a straw, some water that you can just get from the tap of your sink, a marker, and the watercolor testing charts. Okay, so uh, when, you drink, when you have tap water, the water that we drink, there's more than water in the water. So for example, you may have heard water being referred to as H2O. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen molecule or atom, so that makes a molecule. Two hydrogen, one oxygen. But that's not all that's in water. There's other things in our water that we drink, and that's what we're going to be testing for today. Today we'll be testing for the following chemicals. Iron, copper, chlorine, pH, and we will also test for water hardness, which is actually a term meaning that there is a lot of calcium and magnesium that is dissolved in the water. Iron is found naturally in most water, but too much iron can stain sinks and tubs because it turns orange when it reacts with oxygen and forms rust. Just like a rusty car, the iron in our water can react with air and stain our sinks and tubs, and you might have noticed orange spots in your tub or sink where the water has dripped over a long time. Copper is found in small amounts naturally in water, but it can also dissolve in your water from copper pipes. The water has to be acidic though to dissolve copper. Chlorine is added at water treatment plants to kill bacteria and germs in our water before we drink it. Too much chlorine smells and tastes bad Chlorine is often added in swimming pools at higher levels than our drinking water, and too much might irritate your skin and eyes. It can even kill plants and fish. That brings us to the next test, pH, which is a scale that measures acidity. Chemicals that are high in acid are in things like batteries. The opposite of acids are bases, and those can be dangerous too. Bleach is an example of a strong base. Pure water is neutral. It is not acidic or basic, but weak acids and bases are normal in nature. Even rainwater is slightly acidic. Finally, we will measure for hardness, which does not mean that the water feels hard, but it means that there's a lot of calcium and magnesium dissolved in the water. If water has a lot of these minerals in it, you might see spots on your glasses after they are washed, or you might see a crusty white buildup on your shower head or faucet. Hard water can eventually clog pipes over time. So now it's time to do your test. You might want to put uh, the water from your tap into a cup or some type of a jar so that you can pour it more easily into the testing bags. 
I find that it's just more difficult to get the sample directly from the sink. In this particular testing kit, the bags have a little um, perforation at the top that keep them sealed. You have to remove that first. Then you open up the bag and the bags have a line of a white strip on them. It's important to put water up to the bottom of the white line. Do not fill it past the bottom of the white line. So I'm gonna try to do that now. It takes some time. You have to uh, look at it carefully. Um, and you might even have to pour some water out if you go over the white line. Now I'm gonna take the indicator. This is the one for iron. We're gonna do iron first. The iron tablet, you will get there. I'm using two. The second one we're gonna use in the next activity. So just use one right now. And some of these tablets are more delicate than others. So you just kind of have to be careful when you're taking them out so you don't break them up too much. And I put the tablet in the baggie. The iron tablet, it takes it a while to dissolve. Some of these you'll find they dissolve really quickly, but the iron tablet actually takes a minute. You might want to um, allow it to just sit in the water for a minute, but then before you start shaking it. To close this bag, the, tap, the top tab is yellow. You're gonna fold the top of the bag a couple of times, probably three or four times, and then close the edges. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave it there for a second to um, let that dissolve. You will probably want to write the name of whatever chemical you're measuring for on the bag. That way, when you look back at all of your results, you'll be able to compare. So this one is iron. Iron, the chemical symbol for iron is Fe. So I'm gonna just put that on that bag while we're still waiting for it to dissolve. All right, now the iron bag, uh, the iron indicator tablet has dissolved in the bag. If you look at it, it didn't change color very much and I don't want you to be discouraged if that happens. All that means is there's probably not a lot of iron in your water. So what you do is you take the color chart and we're gonna compare the color on the chart to the color in the bag. And if you can see here, this one didn't change much at all, so this means that the iron level is very low. And that's fine. You don't need to have a lot of iron in your water. All right, so after you see the results from your iron test, you're gonna write down your observations on your observation chart. And I'm gonna say for the color that this really didn't change color much, it's clear or perhaps a light purple. And then, um, you know, some tests, it'll be dark purple or light pu purple. You have an opportunity to write down kind of the level of intensity of the color. Now the next one we're going to do is copper. I'm gonna get started with copper by writing first, writing the chemical symbol for copper on the baggie. The chemical symbol for copper is CU. Now all of these chemical symbols are on a periodic table. That might be something you wanna look up online so you can tell all the different atoms and elements what are the symbol or the letters that represent those elements. And I'm gonna also, um, I'm gonna remove the tablet first because once you pick up this bag, it's kind of hard to, you can't set it down uh, without spilling the water. So I've got the little copper tablet and, it, and the backs of these say what uh, test it is, the backs of the indicator tablet. And again, with these baggies, you have to tear the tops off of them. Open the baggie and we're gonna fill it up to the bottom of that white line. 
You have to shake it a little bit because the bag might be kind of closed. Oh, that one is perfect. Okay, so I've got it in here and I'm gonna drop the tablet in and I'm going to close the bag, roll it over a few times, and then turn the sides in. Now this one is reacting faster. You can see a color develop uh, more, more quickly than perhaps the iron did. I'm gonna shake this one. I think it dissolves a little bit faster than iron. All right, so now we have copper completed. You can see the color that the uh, water has changed to with the indicator. We're gonna compare that to our color testing chart. So ours is probably co closer to the red than this purpley red or the purple. So what is the indicator for the reddish color? It says here on the color testing chart that that means there's no copper in the water. And that's fine. Uh, we don't need copper in our water, uh, but it is found naturally in low amounts sometimes. So we're gonna write down on our observation chart the color, so in this case, I would say maybe a reddish orange. And so what level would that be? That would be no copper. According to our color chart, that would mean that there's no copper. So the next thing we're testing for is chlorine. The chlorine tablet actually says DPD4 on my, on my test. I'm gonna rip off the top part of the baggie, open it up. Add water to the bottom line. And like I said, if you have to pour some water out, that's fine. I'm gonna add the tablet. Fold the baggy top over a few times, close the top, and we're just gonna shake it up a little bit. Symbol for chlorine is CL. Now, as you can see, with chlorine, it should turn pink. And the less chlorine in the water, the, um, the lighter color pink it will be. So in our case, if low level chlorine is this shade of pink and high level chlorine is this shade of pink and our bag is almost clear, I would say there is little to no chlorine in that sample. And I'm going to write that down on my observation chart. Okay, so for the next test, we're gonna be doing pH. And again, pH is a test or measure of acidity. I'm gonna write pH on this baggie. Okay, good. I'm gonna take the pH tablet. Out of the casing and add it to the water. Okay, so this is our sample and this is the color chart for pH. As I look, or I'm comparing this pH to this one, um, it looks like it's a little bit of a lighter green, almost a yellowy green. So I would say that this uh, test is closer to seven, which is really a very neutral pH, meaning it's not acidic and it's not basic. And 
most in water should be neutral. So this water is pretty pure because it is practically neutral. Now there is a little, an extra test we want to do with this one because uh, pH reacts differently to some other chemicals. So let me just open this baggie up. So this is one thing you're gonna do differently with this test that you didn't do on any of the other tests. You're gonna take your straw, you're gonna open up the baggie, and you're gonna blow into the liquid. Don't drink any or suck any in, but just blow into the liquid and let's see what happens. You can determine how long you wanna blow, but just a few seconds, you should see a change. Okay. Good. Now, you see that after blowing into the water for the pH, the color changed. It turned yellow, so it went from green to yellow. Well, what happens here? So, in our breath, of course, we know that we uh, breathe in oxygen, but we're breathing out carbon dioxide. When we add the di carbon dioxide to our water, we're actually making it more acidic. So I guess our breath just puts more acid into the water. Okay, and so for our final test, we are gonna check for water hardness, which is just a measure of how much calcium and magnesium are in a sample. I'm gonna go ahead and write hard on the baggie to uh, represent this particular test as opposed to magnesium and calcium. I've added the water right to that white strip, and then I'm going to add the indicator tablet, fold over the top a few times, and close the ends so that water can't get out. All right, and I'm gonna just shake this one for a little while. All right, so this indicator is just about dissolved. We're gonna take a look at our color chart for hardness and compare it to our sample. Our sample in this case is blue. Uh, a hard water sample would be purple. So the blue indicates that it is soft. The level is soft. And basically soft water, um, is perfectly fine. You know, we want soft water. It doesn't have a lot of magnesium and calcium in it. In addition, it's easier to uh, create bubbles in soft water. So that's one of the reasons that people sometimes actually add water softeners to their water if they are in a location that has hard water. So I'm gonna just write down my observation from this experiment. All right, so that was part one of today's activity and experiment. Now you have enough indicators to test one more sample. This time we're gonna test not the water that comes from your sink or tap water, but we're gonna test something different. Okay, so this time we're gonna test some bottled water. You might be wondering, is the bottled water that we drink, is it safer, is it healthier than the water that comes from your tap? This is gonna be how you find out. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna have you do on your own is repeat these steps using the bottled water as opposed to your tap water, and then you can compare. Write down the observations, compare um, the samples that you get from the first test to the bottled water. You might find that the water that you drink is just as safe or safer than the bottled water or just has less of these uh, chemicals in them. Or you might find that your tap water has a lot of one of these, uh, one of these minerals and you will need to perhaps make some changes to your water quality in your home. Well, that's all for today. I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.